All right. Hello, YouTube. It's been a couple of weeks since I've spoken to you last. Hope you all are doing well. We have some really major Apex Legends news, and this is not just, oh, hey, new season, fun, look, happy times. This is like, there are serious major meta changes happening here. Things are really, I think, going to feel a lot different this season. Um, so there's a lot to talk about, and let's just go right into it. Now, of course, we have the new legend, Rampart. Um, we're just going to skim over her a little bit. Um, I'll talk about her more in depth in a sponsored video for EA, uh, in the coming weeks, once I get some time to actually play with her and get some footage with her and yada, yada, yada. So we're just going to skim over her abilities and get onto the actual, uh, meat and potatoes here. So, uh, her passive ability is the modded loader and it has increased magazine capacity and faster reloads when using LMGs and her ultimate minigun, Sheila. Uh, modded loader also increases the amount of shots before overheating occurs and improves the cooling with the L-Star. So that way you actually still get some kind of benefit with the L-Star. Uh, but overall, I don't think this is a huge deal. Um, getting more bullets in your Spitfire seems like not a huge deal to me unless maybe you're hot dropping and it means that you have one more gun that is just a little bit better for you on the hot drop in the way of the Spitfire because you can just hip fire it. Uh, for very, very long periods of time, and it's kind of got that that old uh, that old 32 round magazine havoc effect, where you just drop on it and pick it up, and you've got so many bullets in magazine that, like, even if you don't find ammo and attachments and whatever, it's still very viable. So this passive will, I think, kind of turn the Spitfire a little bit better into that role. It will turn the L-Star a little bit better into that role, and now that the Devotion is going to be coming back as a light machine gun into the regular loot pools, it's no longer a care package weapon. I mean, this seems like a really okay passive. I don't think this is something that you're going to care about in the mid and late game, but I think in really aggressive, hot drop situations, modded loader is going to be really great at improving your consistency in the first 30 seconds to two minutes of a game. Uh, next up, we have your tactical amped cover. So this is going to make every Titanfall player in history enraged, um, but I promise that it's not as bad as it sounds. So you build... A wall on the ground you don't build it very tall it's quite short um, it's about you know waist high or so and then these little pylons will rise up from the sides and they'll create an a wall which is this orange uh, transparent wall that you can shoot through and it will amp your bullets as you shoot through them so only your bullets will get amped your enemies will not when they're shooting back at you unless they you know flip sides flip spaces with you and you know they shoot through it it's like a one-way uh, bullet amping basically so your bullets will do extra damage the exact amount uh, of extra damage your bullets are going to get is not currently known uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what damage values end up being with the amped cover but uh, combining amped cover with some of the uh, other meta changes we're getting namely that we're all going to have evo armor there's nothing but evo armor in the game with the exception of gold but you know ignoring gold uh, for your typical armors it's all evo all the time Purple Evo is only 75 now, and Red Evo is only 100. So, generally speaking, players are going to die faster in the late game. Which is a big deal. That's a really, really big deal. I mean, they're going to die a little faster at all stages, but especially late game. Um, you know, unless they've uh, unless they've got that red armor or a gold armor, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to have 25 less HP. So, amped cover, making your bullets do more plus having less HP in general, can be a very dangerous combination of factors. We'll see how that plays out once uh, this update is actually live for us. Finally, you have your ultimate, which is the emplaced minigun Sheila. Uh, this is really simple. It places down a minigun on the ground. A maximum of three of them can be deployed at a time. Um, you have to use your uh, use button to actually mount it and use it. Uh, supposedly has high ammo capacity and a long reload time. Many data mines and leaks have claimed that it will use heavy ammo. I don't know if that's actually going to be true when the game, or rather when the update comes out, uh, but keep an eye on that as to whether or not it actually uses heavy ammo. Next up, we have, again, for Titanfall fans, the return of the Volt SMG. We predicted this, oh, like two to three months ago, and we did a video kind of theory crafting what the balance of the Volt SMG might look like. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box down below, and you guys can uh, compare and see how well my predictions will end up comparing to the actual damage values that come into the game tomorrow. Um, hopefully, my, met my method of data mining and getting all of the weapons stats and stuff has not been changed and altered in any way, and I can still do that so we can get a, a proper like weapon damage charts and video out eventually after release, um, you know, just 
by my personal, you know, interest and availability because I do, do still work full time and many other things that you guys don't need to know about. Uh, videos are as always just kind of a side thing for me. So we'll cover it at some point and we'll do it better than most other people because they're not generally going to have the actual proper stats. So we can go into the real, real deep depth with that uh, whenever whenever I, I get to it, basically. But Volt should be really, really cool. It'll be kind of a longer range SMG than any other SMG in the game. I think it has potential to be super, super powerful, um, given the fact that A, the R99 is being removed from the normal loot pool and it's being put into the care package. So it's basically changing spots with the devotion. So that's point number one. Point number two is that because this is technically an SMG, you're gonna get that really fast uh, aim down sight speed and that really fast walking speed will aim down sight. So your AD strafing, oh, sorry, my phone, I should turn that off. Um, you're going to get that really fast uh, AD strafing speed and you're going to get um, almost like assault rifle levels of performance in terms of handling and control, at least so it seems from the marketing material. So if that's the case, one has to wonder how good is this going gun going to be? Not maybe not in comparison to the other SMGs, but in comparison to the assault rifles like the Flatline and the R301. I know that when I was initially making my videos about the Volt um, and making my initial predictions, I was mostly comparing it to other SMGs. But I think in retrospect, that may have been a mistake. I think comparing it to the R301 might be a much better point of comparison. So that'll definitely be something that we talk about and bring up and discuss whenever I do a dedicated video on the Volt. Uh, next up, crafting. So basically what they're adding in game is a crafting system. So you have these two new, basically map toys. They are gonna be all over the map. So kind of like how you have the redeploy balloons, kind of like you have the resurrection beacons, kind of like on King's Canyon, you have those ultimate chargers. Um, we're going to be having this brand new thing as well. Now, I don't know if this is only on World's Edge or if this is on both Kings Canyon and World, World's Edge because all the videos and screenshots and whatever I've seen of this is only World's Edge. So I don't know if this is both just one map or both maps. Regardless, there's two different kinds of uh, map toys that they've added. One of them, when you interact with it, you'll get 25 um, of these basically crafting materials, whatever they're specifically called. I, I don't know the specific name but um, you'll get 25 of those materials. And then once you have a certain number of materials, which by the way, will not consume slots in your inventory. They are just something that you carry on your character and they don't care about inventory slots and they will persist through death and uh, resurrection, by the way. So once you pick them up, they're always yours. Um, you take them to what's called a replicator, which is this little computer looking thing where you go up to the computer panel and you can pick from a selection of predetermined items. Uh, some are on a daily rotation, some are on a weekly rotation. Some are just tailored specifically to the weapons that you have in your inventory. So if you have a shotgun, it'll give you shotgun ammo. If you have a heavy gun, it'll give you heavy ammo, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can pick and choose what kind of stuff you want out of it. So Here's what's really interesting about this. Not not so much that, you know, yeah, it's really good for people who are not going to be super aggressive and getting their loot by killing other players and lo looking in death boxes. It's not going to be all about that. I mean, that's interesting. But the thing that's really interesting to me, and this was a note that they made in the dev stream, is that because they're adding the vault to the game, there was a concern that, you know, they're getting to the limits of how much stuff you can put in the loot pool without it starting to really... Um, just dilute things and make it really hard to find the guns you want. And it's going to make it more likely that you find bricks, you know, meaning in like the figurative sense that you're just going to brick on stuff. You're, you're, you're not going to find what you want. You're going to find crappy stuff sometimes, or you're going to find good stuff, but nothing good for your good stuff. And, you know, we've talked about this in stream a lot where I've always said that, like, I, I didn't blame them for not adding a weapon in season five because they have to find a solution for making the loot pool not too diluted with stuff. And I always thought that maybe if they take certain weapons and they make it so, okay, the R99, the R99 is always going to be really powerful and it's always going to be coveted. So we're going to make it so the R99 only spawns here, 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 and here on the map. There's five of them. You got to fight for them. Go get it. You know, like I've always thought unless they did something like that, or maybe it may be a little bit more simple where they take a certain gun and they put it in the vaults on World's Edge and the vaults on King's Canyon say, if you want X gun, you must go to the vaults to get it. It only spawns there. Then that will solve a lot of the, 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 the loot dilution problems. So 
this is another solution to that problem because what they're doing is they're going to take randomly they're going to take one weapon that spawns on the floor and they're going to say okay today that weapon does not i don't know if it's daily or just per match i don't know but that gun will not spawn on the floor it will only spawn in the crafting system and you must craft it to get it so that's a really interesting way of solving that problem that we identified a couple of seasons ago so that i think is really cool and we'll see how this ends up playing out we don't know how common the crafting materials are going to be we don't know how common the replicators are going to be um it's a lot of unknowns but we'll know less than 24 hours from now so be on the lookout for these and make sure you're interacting with this new system because it's going to be really really neat even if you don't have the uh the, the the crafting materials to at least just check the replicator and see oh okay well the devotion is out of the loop pool this game we don't got to worry about devotions or oh the vault is out of the loop pool we're not worried about a vault or whatever gun it might be and you know that you that's just something that you don't have to play around you don't have to try to focus on and work towards I mean, maybe you will still have to keep it in the back of your head like someone could craft it and have it, but you just know it's going to be less likely that someone has it overall. So just keep that in mind. Next up, we have the armor meta changes. So like we alluded to before, regular armor, apart from gold armor, which we're keeping as, you know, a separate thing. It's like a gold item. You know, that's that's kind of out of our out of our discussion. Your, your typical white, purple, and uh, blue armors have been removed from the game for this season everything is evo armor and in addition you will spawn in with a quote-unquote level zero evo armor so you'll have basically no armor like like no pips or no actual points of armor on your character but as you deal damage you're still going to level up your level zero evo to a level one two three or whatever so you don't have to actually pick up an armor from the ground as long as you find a gun and you start shooting people you will at least get those empty bars of your of your evo armor to start building up so that is very very nice this is also going to be complemented by the fact that your regular armors that is it would normally spawning in the world are just simply replaced by white blue and purple evo armors so if you happen to land on a purple evo then cool swap out your level zero for the purple evo and it's like nothing ever changed except you know it's got 25 less capacity and uh I mean that's really it you just have to work to get to your red armor but it's gonna it's gonna make it so you can still have those high value drop locations where you have that coveted purple armor that you're going to be going for but what it really does is that in the hot drop situations it means that if you're fighting against someone who was really lucky and got a purple armor now you don't have to do 200 damage to them with your 100 health now you only have to do 175 with your 100 health i can't count the number of times where i have significantly outdueled someone in a 1v1 even with an inferior gun um but because i had 100 hp and they had 200 I, I just could not overcome that difference so having that 25 hp reduction to purple armor uh i think is going to play really really well for those hot droppers like me out there and that's going to be really really nice next up we have hollow sprays this is not a meta change this is just a nice little addition to the game um, I don't, I really, really don't like the fact that you put them on the ground and they display up and they like basically cover the actual world. That means that you're almost making a, like a really crappy and not bullet blocking, but still vision obscuring and just generally annoying thing, um, that can just be in the world and make it a little harder for people to see you and track your movement and stuff. I, I wonder if you're aiming down sights towards them, if they just simply disappear. I really hope that is the case. Um, but I'm not a fan of the fact that you can just put this on the ground like this. I really wish it was actually a spray that goes on the wall or on the ground, much like in Counter-Strike or um, Overwatch, I think, has sprays and like other games like that. I very much dislike that it's a projector that projects it into the air from the ground. I, I really hope that there is some kind of system where if you aim down sights at these things, they completely disappear and it's like they're not there or you can shoot them and make them go away if nothing else because... It's, it's just going to be one of those things where, like, you know that it's never going to really happen, except just in that one game, you're going to have that one super sweaty, stinky 14-year-old gamer who's got his two other buddies on voice comms that are going to find the one perfect rat spot and cover it up with these stupid things, and you can't see them, you don't know they're back there, and, like, it's just going to be really yucky, right? So, I just hope there's some kind of system where if you aim down sights at them or something, they disappear. And then I'm cool with it. 
Otherwise, it's a really like interesting looking system. Great way for you to express yourself. Yada, yada, yada. Seems neat. I, I just really hope that they, they don't actually impact gameplay some way. Even if it's a super minor thing that I'm just being an old boomer about. Um, next up, there's going to be another quest with this new season. Um, instead of it being actual gameplay stuff and just being text that you read, they're kind of just finding a middle ground. So it's going to be comic panels. So it's basically just going to be like you're an actual, like a comic book almost. Um, and you're going to unlock, I don't know if it's just like a, like a single page or multiple pages, like a, you know, whatever, however long, like the mini comics, uh, will be each week. Um, that's what you're going to end up working through. So that seems really, really cool. I'm a huge, huge fan uh, of that change. So hopefully that's really nice for everyone else as well. Um, next up, let's get into some more meta changes here that we have not spoken about yet. We have some updates to recon classes. So before we go into this, let's kind of back up a little bit. So we have um, we have the heavy legends, right? So we have Gibraltar and Caustic who have the fortified perk, and they are kind of considered to be like defensive legends or uh, or heavies or whatever. And this is just kind of like a an overall category that they fit into. And because they are in that category, they get a passive just for being in that category that is otherwise um, not related to their, their individual character kits. So Pathfinder, Bloodhound, and Crypto are now all being classified as Recon Legends. So there, this is a new bucket that has been made. And every Legend that falls in the Recon bucket um, is now going to be able to scan uh, the survey beacons all around the map. So now to, to basically counteract this change for Pathfinder and to get, make all the characters a little bit unique with that interaction, um, here's kind of what's happening. So whenever Pathfinder activates the um, survey beacons, the cooldown of his uh, ultimate is reduced by 10 seconds permanently. So normally it takes 120 seconds for it to cool down or to refresh if you activate one survey beacon then it's going to be 110 seconds. If you activate two, then it's down to 100 seconds, so on and so forth. So, so I mean, you could theoretically get it to a one minute cooldown for zip lines, which is pretty cool. Um, what else do we have? Bloodhound. So Bloodhound is very, very plain Jane with the survey beacons. They're not getting anything special about it. They just have the ability to use it, and that's pretty much it. Um, we'll come back to their other changes in just a moment. Crypto, as it relates to the survey beacons, has a couple of things. So the surveillance drone itself is now able to activate both respawn and survey beacons from his drone. And both of them are instant uses. So if you get if you have your teammates banners, you can just run over to a respawn beacon and press use on it, just tap it once, and you started a respawn for your teammates. That's it. That's as far as it goes. There is no um, there's no channel or anything. You just get it. That's insane. They've also done a few other things to the drone. I guess we'll go back to that. Let's let's actually just talk about like the main changes of these legends first. Um, now that we've gotten through the survey beacon thing. So that's I mean that's that's really really huge in and of itself. Uh, I think that made crypto way better, um, especially for pubs as it is. But uh, yeah. Anyways, Bloodhound, Beast of the Hunt now gains even more duration when Bloodhound scores a knockdown or a kill when the ultimate timer is about to run out. So that last bit of that sentence is the most particular and important part. Um, if you watched the developer diary or dev stream, whatever they're calling it, uh, basically the idea is, is if you have 15 seconds or below on your Beast of the Hunt, then you're going to get um, a significantly more amount of uh, duration to that ultimate. So you're going to be set back to at least 15 seconds, if not higher. Like if you're like, like 13, 14, you should go to 18 or so. But if you're at like 10 or below, you should be hitting 15. So if you're down at one second left and you just get a kill at the last second, then enjoy your extra 15 seconds of duration because you're going right back up to 15 again. Um, also, while you have your ultimate Beast of the Hunt active, you can now use your Eye of the Allfather, which is your tactical, the Q, the ping, whatever you want to call it. You can now use that on a six second cooldown, which is down for its normal 25. So that is more than four times faster uh, in terms of its cooldown speed. In addition, the actual activation where you, you like, you know, do your hand thingy and you send it out there and you whatever the hell, whatever this this is, that's, you know, when you do that. That animation is twice as fast now, at least while you have the ultimate up. The, the normal activation is still slow, but while your ult is up, 
It's a six second cooldown, activates twice as fast. Super nuts. Like Bloodhound just actually became a viable legend for pubs, in my opinion. I think this is actually like a legend I might try to actually play a little bit, especially if the uh, aim sensitivity stuff, uh, when your field of view changes, is uh, seemingly fixed, then I will definitely be playing a lot more Bloodhound. Just seems really, really cool. Um, next up, we have some crypto overall changes. So the EMP is now going to slow teammates caught in the blast, even if they have no shield. So basically that, that change has been like gone back and forth on a couple of times now. So now that, um, now we're going back to your teammates will always be slowed when they're in, in the blast, no matter what. Um, the only way to get around it, as far as I know, would be something like a, a Wraith portal or a Wraith queue or something like that. Something where like you do like a phase shift should work. But apart from that, uh, you should be slowed when you're in it, which I think is going to be really good. Um, when Crypto was first coming out, I was really concerned that there was going to be like a super dive meta, a super just hold WM1, have your Crypto press the EMP button, and then like your Wraith brings a portal in to portal you up. So that way you can get out of your drone and portal up with the three of them. And now you have three people pushing a team that is minus 150 HP and, um, and slowed and arced and blind and just ugh, bad, right? So... I don't really know if that ever actually became a super strong strategy um, while it was in the game, but clearly if they're nerfing it, I'm, that Respawn must think that it was. I didn't play a whole lot of Apex in the second half of Season 5. I just kind of needed a break from the game in, in general, and I've been playing a lot of other things and not playing much Apex at all for the past like month or so. Um, so I'm not really sure like where that crypto meta was specifically at, but regardless, that's where we are now. Uh, also, the Surveillance Drone has had its HP doubled, but the... Um, hitbox has gotten significantly bigger i know that i've complained and been very vocal for a long time about how impossible it is to hit the surveillance drone especially when the server tick rate is the way that it is it's just you you will see so often that you just get dust after dust after dust after dust just little like little green flashes like crazy on your screen because on client side you're hitting the drone a lot server which is authoritative in this case says no you're not so hopefully a larger size is going to make it actually work when you shoot the drone, make it actually take damage. There, there have been times when the drone is not even moving. It's sitting still and I can't hit it with a wingman. Like, just, just it's, it's absurd to me how often the drone hit registration seems to not work. So I really hope that with this hitbox size increase, I can actually for once in my life hit a drone. That would be fantastic. Please and thank you, Respawn. Uh, next up, we have some other changes as well. Um, I actually have not pre-read these, so I'm going to be kind of reacting to this uh, with you guys because I, I didn't actually realize some of this was even in here. So, Death Totem. For two seconds after being recalled by Revenant's Death Totem, you cannot use Wraith's Dimensional Rift. So this is going to help a lot for ranked play and tournament play. I think mostly for ranked, actually. I see a lot of my friends who play a lot of ranked that have just been incessantly and never-endingly complaining about the, the Revenant go ape, just go ham meta where everyone plays Revenant. It's super degenerate. Everyone just does the ultimate all the time and whatever. I don't know. I, I have not played ranked in quite a while, so I, I don't know what this meta looked like or felt like because I never participated in it myself, but a lot of people who I know are very, very good at the game just hated that meta. Hopefully this change is really good to get things into a better and more competitive um, state. Next up, Octane can now use the stim while healing, but stim will not remove the slow you incur from healing. But I, I don't understand this. Just let Octane mains bunny hop heal. Just let him do it. It's literally Octane. Just let him do it. It's not even... <laughs> just let him have it. Let him have it. Please, Respawn. Why? Uh, anyways, Loba. Black Market's cooldown has been cut in half. That seems really strong. I'm surprised Loba doesn't get played more than, uh, than she currently does. But 90 second cooldown in Black Market seems pretty good. Especially in late game situations where you can just pull six grenades to your team... Drop another black market, pull six grenades to your team. <laughs> Drop a black market, pull six grenades to your team, like or heals or whatever. But you know, 
getting a butt ton of grenades on your team to just zone the heck out of some other team that is just waiting for the next circle to close because you're in a ranked endgame situation, that seems really strong to me. I guess maybe it's not something that you want to actually pick Loba for, um, but you know, if you find yourself in that situation with a Loba, it can be really, really good. So uh, I don't know. Any, any buff for Loba, I think, is good. She definitely needed a little bit of something, and uh, this is definitely that. Next up, Gibraltar's cooldown for his ultimate has been increased by one and a half minutes. It's now, instead of three minutes per bombardment, it is 4.5 minutes per bombardment. That is nuts. Um, Gibraltar players, how are you feeling about this? Again, like I said, I've been out of the meta for a little while now, so I don't have a great tap on where this puts Gibraltar. Um, seems a lot. I don't know if that needed to happen, but I'm okay with it because I'm never really using the Bombardment on cooldown anyways, so that's probably fine. Bangalore's Rolling Thunder, her ultimate just swap places with Gibraltar. So now instead of it being a 4.5 minute cooldown, it's a three minute cooldown. I'm totally fine with that. Bangalore is generally one of the weakest legends in the game, I feel like she, I mean, I mean, let me rephrase. Bangalore in and of herself is a good legend, but because of how strong many of the other legends are, there is just no reason to bring Bangalore in my opinion for the vast majority of players. Like you just, you could do better. But that doesn't mean that Bangalore is bad. I think Bangalore's power level is quite good as it is. But it's just every many other legends are just so ridiculous that you you can't justify her a lot of the time if you're a sweaty tryhard. So will this change make her good enough to uh, to make that better? I apologize. I'm trying to fix my hair. I was not expecting to record today, and my hair is a mess. I'm sorry. I'm ugly. Don't look at me. Um. Anyways, yeah, Rolling Thunder. Sure, I'll take the buff. Why not? I don't think this is going to make me, make me ever click Bangalore in the character select screen, but sure, why not? Uh, finally, Watson's Interception Pylon. The trophy will now shoot down Caustic Barrels. That's amazing. Oh, man. I always used to have so much fun as Caustic throwing barrels into enemies' trophy systems. That's hilarious that they get shot down now. But they do. Oh, and I just remembered, I never talked about this way back in the start, so we're going to do it now because I'm a bad uh, streamer slash YouTube person. Amped cover for, um, what's her name? Rampart. While it's building and being constructed, if you shoot it with a bullet, it will detonate. So you cannot throw down an amped wall mid-combat and have it actually work like don't th th don't think of the titanfall a wall it doesn't just you don't just press the button and have it go down and have it block buttons nearly in block buttons block bullets nearly instantly um with her amped wall that she drops it has to completely construct and if you shoot it before it completely destruct constructs then you will destroy it so just keep that in mind like that is a major counterplay to Rampart. Rampart can't just drop down cover in the middle of a firefight and expect it to work. Much like Caustic can't be aggressive and just throw Caustic traps at you from really far away and then try to get them to detonate on you and use them as pseudo grenades. As, as fun as that was. Um, yeah, you, you can just shoot them anywhere now while they're while they are building and they will just be destroyed in, I assume, like one bullet, if not just two or three. Next up, energy mags are now back in the game because we have four energy weapons. We have the Havoc, the Volt, the Devotion coming back from the care package, uh, as well as, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting something. And there's one more I don't remember. I know there's four. I'm just dumb and can't think of it. Havoc, Devotion, Volt, L-Star. L-Star. That's the other one. Okay. Uh, Turbocharger also back in because there's two weapons that can actually use it now. So they're going to put that back in the game. By that same token, it's only taken them like an entire season, but Precision Choke has been removed from the game and is now integrated into the Triple Take and Peacekeeper by default. And it can be toggled with your Select Fire button. Very, very cool respawn. Thank you for this. I've only been asking for a Precision Choke toggle since day one, but late, better late than never. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, R99 is going into the care package. This is going to be a major change to the game. 
Uh, prowlers are going to be a lot more common. People are going to have to learn to use the burst prowler. People are going to be using the full auto prowler a lot. I very much expect prowler nerfs to come uh, probably in the middle of season six. I think people are going to be crying and whining and complaining about how strong the prowler is. Um, and the fact that you can, sh that it has R99 DPS, but with basically it, it can be, you can hold the trigger down on the prowler for two seconds. Whereas with the R99 at max, you can only hold it down for one second while the prowler still has like an, a mostly equivalent and sometimes better, um, damage per second or TTK to the R99, at least, you know, the, the current version, not the supply drop version. Like I, I really fully expect people to complain about the prowler once season six is really underway because they're going to be seeing it a whole heck of a lot more and there is no r 99 to complete against it so god I, I said that so wrong the r the yeah there will be no r 99 to compete against the prowler at least not often it'll be a sometimes thing not an always thing so i think that the prowler may need to come down just a bit possibly we'll see the damage on the R99 is going up by one damage per bullet, and the magazine size will be 32 with an ammo reserve of 160 uh, while it is a care package weapon. And then the uh, Devotion, going back to the ground loot, it's going to have its normal clip size values of 36, 40, 44, and 48. Fully kitted weapon swaps. So I suppose that what they mean by this are the gold rarity weapons that you'll find on the map sometimes. So you can find a <laughs> devotion with everything. That's insane. I can't believe they're actually doing that. Uh, you can find Mastiff with all the attachments, Triple Take with all the attachments. What? Why? A flat line with all the attachments and a Volt with all the attachments, which I, I understand. I, I, am, I am a fan of flat line and Volt being gold weapons. I don't understand why the Triple Take is one of those. I don't understand why the Mastiff is one of those. And I disagree with the Devotion being one of those. The Devotion is too good of a gun for you to just give players everything on the devotion as a gold weapon right off the bat and i i, I am not excited for that i nah, i don't want it okay moving on updated loot sniper ammo pickups have gone from eight bullets per brick to 12 per brick and your stack size has gone up from 16 per brick to 24 per brick uh i am mostly okay with this change Moving on, energy ammo bricks have been nerfed from 30 down to 20. This is because there's going to be many more energy weapons in the loot pool. In fact, there are twice as many in the loot pool right now for ground loot. So because energy ammo bricks tend to spawn next to energy ammo guns, you're going to find more bricks on the ground so they don't need to give you quite as many bullets. Very simple. Okay, cool. Hemlock. Reduced vertical recoil in burst mode. I am down with that. It might actually be used a little bit on PC now. Slightly reducing recoil pattern in second and third shot, so verse, first burst kicks less. Awesome! The gun might actually be used in on PC now. Burst mode. Time between bursts has been reduced by 0 0.04 seconds. Awesome! The gun might actually have a competitive DPS and TTK to the R301 now. That sounds fantastic. I might actually try the Hemlock. We'll see. Charge Rifle uses two ammo per shot, and the mag size has gone from four to eight. So this is just a purely an ammo economy change that is meant to go along with the um, sniper ammo stack sizes on the ground. So fine with that. Very cool. Triple Take Buff. Fire rate has gone from 1.25 to 1.4. Um, so basically, respawn gives these as multipliers. You have to multiply by, I think, 60, if I if memory serves correctly. So it should be 84 rounds per minute, I think, if I'm doing the math right. Um, I haven't even looked at this in so long, so I might be misremembering. I think you just take that number and multiply by 60 for RPM. Because I think this is in rounds per second, so you need to multiply by 60 for rounds per minute, which is what people normally talk about guns in the format of so yeah about what is it what was it i already forgot 84 did i say i'm gonna do it again 1.4 times 60 yeah 84 okay so neat mag size going up by one big fan cool very cool uh choke has been built into the weapon by default cool improve recoil controllability no idea what that means i've never felt that the triple tick the triple take excuse me has too much recoil but whatever cool buffs are buffs make the triple take usable Appreciate it. Oh, wait a second. 
That was for the Spitfire, not the triple take. I just didn't see... Okay, I didn't see this, like, PK heading for Peacekeeper. Okay, so yeah. So that's actually... The, never mind. Yeah, triple take didn't have too much recoil. The Spitfire, though, better recoil controllability. Good. Uh, maybe in Season 11, we can have another bullet point right here that says, gave it real iron sights that are usable and not, like, looking through the hole of a brick. That would be... That would be, like, fantastic. Which I'm now looking up a brick with holes. Because this is what it feels like whenever I'm looking through the sights of a Spitfire. I feel like I'm trying to, like, aim through a hole in a brick. Like that. No. Stop it. Not fun. Respawn. You are all about find the fun, yes? That is not the fun. Thank you. Okay. Havoc, another new recoil pattern. Uh, cannot comment. We'll have to go into the firing range and try this out to comment on this. Who knows? No idea. Mozambique, clip size, three to four. Let's go. That's awesome. P2020, damage increase from 13 to 15. Hammer point multiplier uh, down from 2.7 to 2.35. And the mag size is going up. It only took them a year and a half, but the P2020 and the Mozambique, even if they're still going to be the worst guns, are not going to, hopefully not going to be completely dumpster garbage without the um, hammer point. So that's really cool. Big fan. I like this. Let's go. Sentinel only requires one shield cell to charge if you have gold armor. Everyone asked for that when they made the gold armor change in Season 5. Uh, and sure, why not? Sentinel's not a super great gun anyways. It's just totally like a for fun thing, not a for competition thing in most situations, unless you are like hot sick, I guess. So <laughs> hot sick, if you watch this, please let me know because I would appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I'm down with that change 100%. Next up, Prowler. Uh, reduce vertical recoil and burst mode. I disagree. I disagree. Increase horizontal re recoil in auto mode. I agree. Okay. So I know I mentioned that I thought the Prowler was probably going to need some kind of nerf. So that's kind of it. I don't think you need to buff burst mode, but I definitely think you need to nerf auto mode, especially if there's no RA9. So we'll see where the gun fits. Uh, maybe they've already foreseen the, uh, the Prowler meta and they're already actively working against it. Very, very cool. Quality of life. Supply drop weapons are now heirloom tier, which is red, to avoid confusion with fully kitted guns, which will remain gold. I like this change overall because weapons are constantly rotating between being gold or not. And if they're going to be constantly rotating between being in the care package and out of the care package, making them red as, as a difference, I think, is going to be very, very good. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm okay with that, I think. World's Edge, performance improvements. Especially around the tree, the dome, and skyhook while looking towards the center of the map. Very, very cool. Alterations were made to the ring to prevent late zones from centering on unplayable terrain and reduce the predictability of the zone's pull. I'm sure this is going to be very, very good for tournament level players. I've never really experienced this because most of my games end around circle three because I just hold W all the game. So, neat. Tournament players rejoice, I suppose. Uh, there's some bug fixes as well, which I'm not going to go through because these are not really like meta changes. Um, I guess I'll just look through it really briefly. Revenant and Pathfinder took less damage from Nox Gas in, in some instances, apparently, which is weird. And that's fixed. Sometimes EMP wouldn't destroy a black market. doesn't come up often, but sure. Um, fixed Gibraltar airstrike markers for appearing inside buildings. Don't understand. Anything else interesting? <laughs> Pathfinder. Hi, friend. Thank you for the Easter egg respawn. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, speaking of this, fix an issue with Evo armor doubling the effect of leveling up, causing some brightness of the screen. I wonder if this is the thing where when you level up the Evo armor, it just literally will completely blind you and block your crosshairs. I hope that's the thing that they're fixing here because that would be super awesome. I would be such a big fan of that. Um... Fix an issue with the train killing players are coming out of the Wraith portal on the train, but the train is gone. There's no more train this season unless it's coming back. Who knows? Um, I think this is mostly 
it. Oh, fix an issue where death protection runs out with an active dock drone nearby and dock would not start healing you. Never experienced this, but cool. All right. Well, anyways, this has been almost 40 minutes of talking. There is a lot of major meta changes coming to Apex Legends. The game is going to play very differently this season. Um, and for the first time in quite a while, I'm excited to play some Apex again. So looking forward to it. I will see you all on stream. Um, when this is actually uploaded and available to you, this will probably be on update day. So I will see you at 6 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, August 18th for uh, some Apex streaming, yeah? I'll see you all then. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new. Links to the patch notes and everything will be down below, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye. Thank you. Goodbye.